Statistically, Parkinson's multiple sclerosis and Lou Gehrig's disease mortalities tends to increase with latitude. Like other northern latitudes, the northern region of the United States also has higher rates of Parkinson's, MS, and ALS. In the United States, areas with prior glaciation have depleted iodine content in the soil. An iodine deficiency is the cause of thyroid enlargement, called goiter or hypothyroidism. The same areas with a higher concentration of goiter have more Parkinson's, MS, and ALS. The geographic area with more of these neurological diseases is north of the 37th degree latitude. The substantia nigra produces dopamine and is high in iodine. A long-term iodine deficiency before and after birth leads to an increased risk of goiter and a breakdown of the dopaminergic system in adulthood. The main features of this breakdown include increased numbers of brain dopamine receptors which are more easily oxidized because of decreased levels of three neuroprotective enzymes glutathione peroxidase, catalase, superoxide dismutase, increased levels of dopamine oxidation called dopachrome, and increased levels of cytotoxic glutamate production. When all these factors are taken together, substantia nigra neurons die and a dopamine deficiency occurs. A series of articles show the relationship between hypothyroidism and Parkinson's disease. Hypothyroidism concealed by Parkinson's disease. The development of hypothyroidism in a patient with Parkinson's disease can go undetected since the course of both diseases can involve similar clinical features. Hypothyroidism in Parkinson's disease and the issue of diagnostic confusion. Development of hypothyroidism in a patient with Parkinson's disease may be overlooked because the clinical manifestations of the two disorders are similar. And finally, Parkinson's disease camouflaging early signs of hypothyroidism. For Parkinson's disease, Dr. Foster recommends levodopa, with high doses of vitamin B3, also called niacin, and coenzyme Q10. Given the apparent relationship between iodine and dopamine, it seems logical to further explore the value of this mineral in the treatment of these neurologic diseases. Niacin improve rigidity and bradykinesia in a Parkinson's disease patient but also caused unacceptable nightmares and skin rash. Low-dose niacin supplementation modulates GPR-109A, niacin index and ameliorates Parkinson's disease symptoms without side effects. Niacin has a high affinity for GPR-109A, an anti-inflammatory receptor. As a pharmacologic ligand, niacin, but not nicotinamide, acts through GPR-109A. We observed significant upregulation of GPR-109A expression in the blood as well as in the substantia nigra in the Parkinson's disease group compared to the aged match controls. Niacin levels were lower in Parkinson's disease and were associated with increased frequency of experiencing body pain and decreased duration of deep sleep. NADH is the coenzyme form of vitamin B3 or niacin. In a trial, 885 Parkinsonian patients were divided into two groups. Half were given oral NADH and the other half intravenous NADH. 80% showed beneficial clinical effect with the best results on younger patients with the shortest duration of disease. NADH stimulates dopamine biosynthesis. Nicotinamide is the amide of nicotinic acid, 
vitamin B3. Nicotinamide protects dopaminergic neurons against MPTP-induced neurodegeneration. This study investigated whether the biologically active vitamin B3 metabolite nicotinamide could direct the differentiation of mouse embryonic stem cells, cultured as monolayers, into neurons at either early or late stages of development. Interestingly, we observed a dose-responsive increase in the percentage of neurons when nicotinamide was added at early stages to the cells undergoing differentiation. Future work will focus on evaluating the effect of nicotinamide on the differentiation of midbrain dopamine neurons towards a therapy for Parkinson's disease. Although both niacin and niacinamide are neuroprotective, their mechanisms appear to be different. Here we suggest that the basis for idiopathic Parkinson's disease is a lethal synthesis from, with the failure to preserve, vitamin B3. Now scientists have determined that brown kelp, which boasts the highest concentration of iodide of any plant or animal, passively takes in this element from seawater and then releases it when needed to detoxify harmful reactive oxygen species, which are generated by such external forces as pollution and intense light, as well as by internal metabolic processes. Aclonia cava is a species of brown algae. Ethanol extracts from Aclonia cava induces a significant inhibition of anti-inflammatory activity in lipopolysaccharide-stimulated murine microglia. It reduced inflammation in mice brain macrophages. Fucoidin is a sulfated polysaccharide extracted from brown seaweeds which possesses a wide variety of biological activities, including potent antioxidative effects. Fucoidin protects against dopaminergic neuron death in vivo and in vitro. Ascophyllum nosodum is a species of brown seaweed and is composed of between 4 and 10 percent fucoidin and 5 to 10 percent of mannitol. Mannitol is a sugar alcohol derived from most fungi, bacteria, algae, and plants, and is used in dietetic and diabetic products. In the fruit fly model of Parkinson's disease, mannitol increased locomotor activity and decreased the accumulation of alpha-synuclein. Coenzyme Q10 helps the body produce ATP, adenosine triphosphate. After I started taking CoQ10, I researched if the combination of CoQ10 and peak ATP are a good therapeutic combination for Parkinson's disease. Peak ATP are specially coated soft gels designed to survive stomach acidity, so the ATP will be delivered to the small intestine. According to the inventor of peak ATP, Dr. Rappaport, a combination of elevated extracellular ATP pools and increased intracellular CoQ10 can be utilized to improve oxygen delivery, enabling the CoQ10 to stimulate cellular ATP synthesis. There are not any peak ATP Parkinson's studies, but peak ATP produces uric acid, also known as urate and there is a definite uric acid Parkinson's disease relationship. LERC2 gene mutations are the most common genetic form of Parkinson's. Both LERC2 and idiopathic Parkinson's patients showed significantly reduced uric acid levels. A Canadian glutathione study noted a trend for decreased levels of uric acid also was observed in Nigra of all patient groups. A significant amount of studies have established the uric acid relationship with men, but this association was more significant in men than in women. Uric acid is a normal component of blood and is an antioxidant. 
Researchers at the Harvard School of Public Health have found that people with the highest levels of uric acid have a 55% reduced risk of Parkinson's disease. There is an inverse relationship between uric acid and Parkinson's disease. If a man has Parkinson's and he has high levels of uric acid, he will have a mild case of Parkinson's. If a man has Parkinson's and he has low levels of uric acid, he will have a severe case of the disease. In 2008, the Michael J. Fox Foundation awarded a grant to investigate the potential of inosine to slow or stop the progression of Parkinson's disease. Inosine is a nucleoside that raises urate levels within the body. In 2013, the results of the trial came in and secondary analysis demonstrated non-futility of inosine treatment of slowing disability. Industry interest may present a roadblock to drug development. Inosine is currently available as a supplement marketed for athletic performance improvement. This makes the compound less desirable for commercial investors. I searched the internet to find reasons for the uric acid Parkinson's disease relationship and I found a number of things, including the following. From a 2009 issue of Practical Neurology, and I quote, Patients with a higher initial urate concentration had a lower percentage loss of striatal uptake of iodine. From the article, An Apple a Day Keeps the Parkinson's Away, author Kevin Spittler states, Urate acts as an iron collator. It binds free iron and prevents the generation of free radicals that damage the substantia nigra. Uric acid scavenges peroxynitrite and nitric oxide. Nitric oxide and its toxic product peroxynitrite contribute to oxidative stress and neurodegeneration in Parkinson's disease. Higher levels of nitric oxide and peroxynitrite leads to higher UPDRS scores. It seems since current Parkinson's disease treatments do not affect the pathology of the disease, Using drugs that exert neuroprotective properties should be considered for the treatment of Parkinson's in order to prevent further neuronal cell loss. In America, states above the 37th degree latitude can have as much as six months of cloudy weather annually. In a Finnish study with 157 early untreated Parkinson's patients, almost 70% had a vitamin D insufficiency and 26% had a vitamin D deficiency. Sunshine is the most accessible source of vitamin D. When sunlight comes into contact with the skin, cholesterol is converted into vitamin D. Another thing that people with Parkinson's um, tend to be low in is vitamin D. Um, D is in dog, <laughs> the sunshine vitamin, which we don't have much here in the Pacific Northwest. So I was extremely low in that. And I take 5,000 IUs a day of that just to keep my le levels normal. Forty patients with idiopathic Parkinson's were recruited to measure balance and vitamin D levels in preparation for an intervention study. Researchers hypothesized that vitamin D deficiency negatively impacts balance and results in increased fall rates for persons with Parkinson's. Serum vitamin D concentrations were correlated inversely with Parkinson's severity as measured by the Motor Unified Parkinson's Rating Scale. These findings support the hypothesis that vitamin D plays a role in balance among patients with Parkinson's disease and identify specific outcome measures for detecting effects of vitamin D upon balance. On the periodic table, iodine is in the halogen group of elements. Consumption of the other members of this group, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, can inhibit the absorption of iodine and cause a deficiency. Bromine is a poison and is an additive to flour. In the 1980s, bromine replaced iodine in the production of bread. Bromine in bread has been banned in many countries and in California labels are added noting that bromine is a carcinogen. 
Chlorine is used in water purification to destroy bacteria and to bleach grain to make white bread. In the March 2014 journal, Lancet Neurology, fluoride has been newly classified as a developmental neurotoxin by medical authorities. Fluoride joins lead, arsenic, methylmercury as a neurotoxin known to cause harm to the brain. Tap water, toothpaste, processed foods and beverages, pesticides, tea drinks, fluorinated pharmaceuticals, and Teflon pans are all sources of fluoride. The present study for the first time shows potent neuroprotective activity of the methanol extract of German chamomile against aluminum fluoride induced oxidative stress in rats. Chamomile caused dose-dependent neuroprotective activity by significant decrease in lipid peroxidation and increase in superoxide dismutase, catalase, glutathione, as compared with negative control group. Adult male mice were orally administered sodium fluoride daily, and after 30 days, a significant increase in lipid peroxidation and decrease in glutathione, total ascorbic acid, and reduced ascorbic acid. In addition, the activities of the enzymatic antioxidants, catalase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione reductase, as well as cholinesterase, also decreased. Administration of black tea extract along with sodium fluoride resulted in significant mitigation of all the sodium fluoride-induced effects that we examined. The following website correlates fluoride use with country-by-country -country incidence of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. 